Hello, Monet Cafe friends. This is Susan Jenkins, and I am here in beautiful St. Pete, Florida. I'm on a little getaway, and uh, this is just one of the views from my balcony. And I wanted to do a little painting while I was here, but you know, it's so darn hot right now. I mean, it is like, I would be sweating so bad out there, even though I brought my little hat and everything. But um, it's beautiful here. Hey, hubby, you get to see my husband, Todd. Say hi, honey. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna walk through here and just show you what I have done to set up. This is uh, actually the Guy Harvey Hotel. It is just a beautiful place with paintings everywhere. Oh, there's me, hello. And um, it's just a nice, nice hotel. And um, what's cool is that I have a neat little area over here, this little kitchen area. And uh, again, paintings everywhere that are beautiful. Um, but I've set me up a little place here um, just to do some painting. I wanted to paint outside, but again, it is so hot. But at least I have a nice view of the ocean here. It's just so pretty. So anyway, I'm gonna get started and I'm actually going to be doing um, some little um, tiny paintings that are called the ACEO size. They're basically like, almost like a business card size. They're three and a half by two and a half. And uh, what I have here is um, some uh, sanded paper that I've already pre-cut um, to be able to just have access to them very quickly when I get here and just start to paint. And I've actually um, copied someone um, from our Facebook uh, group, Monet Cafe Art Group, and I've made them a quarter of an inch bigger. I have on here a uh, ACEO plus border. It's like a quarter inch border just so I can look at it and know what size it is. And uh, it was from someone, uh, another artist named Brad on a, in our Facebook group. And I liked how he just leaves a little border around it. And then what is also neat is that they make these little sleeves um, to put your painting in. Um, it's just like a little plastic sleeve. You can get the plastic bags and even little mats for these that are cute, pre-made. But um, these little plastic sleeves are also very nice for just putting your artwork in, sliding them in there, and then they're protected and safe. So that's just a little bit of my setup. But I actually wanted to just show, I've got this nice Sienna um, plein air um, box that I use, and it's very handy for taking pastels when you're on a trip. And I've just arranged um, my pastels in here. I've got some neutrals over here. I was kind of in a hurry when I packed. Um, I've got some of my new pastels here that are harder. Um, I've got some of the, um, of course, Unison in here and Sennelier, I think I'm saying that right. That's also this paper is the LeCarte Sennelier paper. And it's very sanded, rough, very coarse. And this is a paper that you do not want to put water on, okay? No, no, no to water on this. It will just um, deteriorate the paper. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a few of these. These come in pads actually that are larger. Can't remember how big, it's bigger than 11 by 14. But I've got some different um, colors too that they come in. I love working on something besides white. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I actually took some photos um, from our very own member reference photo album in our Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group. And there are some members that are sharing their own photos to this album. There's over 400 pictures in this album already and they're wonderful. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna enjoy this view while I paint. Even though I couldn't get out and do my own painting on location, uh, I might try to do that some early in the morning tomorrow when it is uh, much, much cooler. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully we'll have fun with this and you'll learn something. I thought I'd do a little uh, voiceover recording for these uh, clips of me painting because um, obviously I can't use the sound when I speed it up like this. <laughs> and so sometimes I just wanna um, explain a little bit more of my process. Here I wanted to just let you know I'm getting down as I always talk about big shapes and values. If you could just keep those two things in mind when you start. Keep it big and keep uh, focusing on the lights and the darks. That's what I mean by values. And a lot of times you'll notice here, I lay down darker values sometimes, like in that background, that mountain or whatever it is in that backfield is darker than it's going to be uh, when I'm finally done. But I lay down the darker to give it um, something substantial uh, to begin with. And this, of course, I'm uh, laying down the big shapes of the trees in the darkest value. You can see from the reference photo that is definitely the darkest value. Um, but I often like to think of it as instead of drawing individual things right now, 
you're laying a foundation. And I was thinking as I was watching this, it's kind of like um, someone who's like a farmer and planting. First, you have to put down your dirt. You have to establish something for your painting to go on. And um, so you're just usually getting down the dirt and the basic things before you do anything else. And then once you do that, um, get the generalities down, you start layering and building upon your painting. Again, big um, to small and more simple to more complex. And you never want to get too complex uh, at all if you want to keep that impressionistic painterly look. So you see, I can still, um, I'm still working on big shapes, but I'm starting to get down other layering on top of those shapes. And um, at this point right now, I'm still kind of establishing some values. Um, the trees are going to absolutely be the darkest thing. But if you notice, if you squint your eyes and look at the reference image, well, um, you can see that the darkest value in that front field is going to be to the far right. Uh, the left side of that foreground field is lighter than the right side. So that's why I'm going to continue to establish that side as darker. Now you can see what I just did when I said I was going to lighten up that mountain in that back field. I just did that. Notice how that mountain in the back now has um, the purple behind it and the blue or turquoisey blue on top of it. And it gives so much more interest than if I had just made that turquoise color in the background. So the layering is, uh, is crucial to make an interesting painting um, where the colors just play upon each other. Now you can see I, I'm using that eggplant. It's the Terry Ludwig or Ludwig eggplant color that is that beautiful dark dark. It's not a black, it looks black. And um, I'm getting down the darkest darks right now and I'm um, going to build upon that as well. And I often like to share, I'm probably going to do a video on this, where I share that color and value is relative to what surrounds it. So a lot of times if you want a color to look dark, um, you put something light next to it. Uh, but that's a whole other lesson. <laughs> and so um, now I'm working more on just still layering up those from the dirt up and now I'm layering, and the values, I'm layering some of those grasses that the flowers are going to actually sit on top of those. And um, so I'm still not yet to those final stages. The whole painting is going to end up probably having no more than uh, three or four layers um, in something this small like this. And now if you notice the, the green that I just used there um, on the left side of the field, was a warmer green. It's because that's where the sun is shining, where I said there are lighter values. The greens that I'll use on the right side are going to be cooler greens and darker greens and purples. Purple is always a great color to use in shadows. Um, so, And this uh, particular reference photo happens to have purple flowers. I don't know if it's a field of lavender or what the flower is, but it's more like a blanket. So now I'm just establishing those purples. If you see that white piece of paper pop up often, it's me cleaning my pastel on that paper. Sometimes the pastel will get dirty and if I just kept using it, it would get a muddied effect. So now I'm getting down in some of those grasses that are a little deeper, um, not the top grasses and not the ones directly in the light. They're going to be more of a teal or a, a cooler green rather than a warmer green. So still establishing um, some of the top layers now of those flowers. Um, again, I've got the cooler purples on the right and I'm going to start getting some of those warmer purples on the left. If you're still a little, and I have a few of those uh, lighter ones peeking through on the other side as well, but if you're still concerned or um, don't know what I mean by cool and warm colors, I have a video on my YouTube channel. I think it's called that, um, how to distinguish cool and warm colors, something like that. I'll, I'll try to provide a link, but um, it's a great lesson and just learning the difference of warm and cool colors and when to use them. If you notice, I just added that beautiful warm purple. It's a deep magenta purple into some of those trees. Um, so it gave a little interest, a little warmth, and now I'm layering some um, darker greens over the trees. Um, I can't talk as fast as I'm painting here because I sped the painting up. <laughs> um, but again, just getting in. Now you notice, now I'm just finally getting to some of those little highlights of those flowers. And notice I'm not painting every single flower. I'm just giving a hint. 
your brain can figure it out. We don't have to paint everything all at once. I mean, all in the painting. We just give hints of things and it makes a much more interesting and impressionistic painting. Now I'm adding what's called sky holes. The tree was kind of like a big blob before. And so you don't try to paint every branch and every leaf of a tree. You paint the big groups, like I said, big shapes, and then you add, uh, you carve out the tree later. Um, and it, it's just really much more interesting and impressionistic. Now, I haven't been an expert at sky holes, so sometimes I get them in a little bit too bold or maybe in the wrong place, but I soften them up with a pastel if they don't seem to be in the right spot. Now, this group of trees didn't have a lot of um, openings at the um, trunks of the trees, but I still gave a little hint of some lighter greens within those trees. Now, here is the um, final painting and uh, I took it out in the light to be able to get a good photograph of it and uh, also just tried to change the levels and things after I did the photo to make it look as much like the original uh, as possible. You know, sometimes getting a good photograph is hard, but this is really pretty close to what it looks like. Um, and as you can see, uh, when you look at it closely, you can um, get an idea of the values more closely and uh, see that there's a lot of paper even still showing through, like up in the sky, so, and down below uh, in the grasses, so it's definitely not overworked. And I liked this one, it was fun. Okay, so this is actually the first painting that I did that I'm putting second here because I had some camera difficulties with my, my hair and my head getting in the way. <laughs> so I'm going to um, just, uh, um, show a little bit of this one. I'm going to speed it up in a minute, but I just wanted to talk a little bit at the beginning. If you notice, sometimes I actually, I'm left-handed, but sometimes I'll actually use my right hand if it um, is more convenient with the setup or just more coordinated um, uh, to be able to reach something better. So I recommend sometimes just trying to paint with your opposite hand. Sometimes you'll be surprised. You actually will get more of a loose impressionistic uh, style. Um, by using your non-dominant hand, so it's kind of fun sometimes. But anyway, um, right now I'm just basically establishing the composition. I'm looking at the horizon line in the background, uh, which is that field and trees uh, bordering the sky, and I'm just lightly, this is a new pastel that I'm using. Uh, it's a harder pastel, and it's sometimes a good pastel to sketch in things. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing right there, and I'm just really trying to get the composition in. So now I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because uh, I got very little footage because you see my hair right there. It's even, I need to pull back that crazy hair. That's because I was at the beach and my hair was flying all over the place from the beach wind from earlier in the day. So even though I didn't get very much footage, um, I thought I'd just share this little bit right here so you can kind of see how I'm using, again, the layering tech or the, the blocking in technique with the, the shapes. I am going ahead here and getting in kind of the idea of where the flowers are, more of just being able to measure than anything and getting in a general composition first and then working big shapes um, and values down to small. So here is the final painting and I liked it. I punched up color like I often do, but uh, it was fun. And thanks again to uh, the member in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook who shared this uh, beautiful reference photo. Now this next painting is one that I actually started before I did any filming. So you're seeing it after I've kind of blocked in um, the big shapes and the values, and now I'm working a little bit more on some of the the more specifics in the from the reference photo and this is another reference photo from our member reference group uh, or member reference album in our monet cafe um, art group on facebook and th the album has currently over 400 uh, photos in it and i've said this before but it's really uh, a blessing because many people who are interested in art, oh, there's my husband in the reflection in the background. <laughs> um, many people who are interested in art are very good at taking photographs. They already uh, line them up great with composition. And so it's just a really valuable resource um, for us to find some good photos in our group. So I really loved this, another great photograph. Um, and I loved the, the light and the shadow in this. And so I'm trying to kind of keep that uh, feeling there and I'm almost making this a little bit abstract. 
Um, and a lot of times if you are interested in abstract artwork, I actually am getting more interested in it all the time. Um, a good way to pursue it is to really zoom in very closely to a subject matter and just explore the shapes and it gets you to where you're not concentrating on uh, necessarily what a thing is, but just the more interesting shapes and values and colors um, in that particular zoomed in version. So because this is more of a macro and zoomed in on these flowers, it gave me the opportunity to keep it a little bit more abstract. So anyway, I just loved these colors and I really enjoyed working on this one. I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit and share the final. <music> 